Developing meaningful cross-curricular links is a really important way of working at primary level. One way we've managed to achieve this is by taking skills learnt during a design and technology activity and applying them to other subject areas such as literacy, science and PHSE. Now, if you can remember, what we've been doing already is we, in our beautiful brag project, we've been having a little think about looking at existing products, so looking at bags that are all around us, bags for children, bags for ladies, bags for men even, and we thought about who's going to use that bag and what the purpose of the bag is for. Making bags is a wonderful topic for developing children's understanding of products having and needing a user and purpose. There's a wide range of existing products out there that are readily available from charity shops to donations from parents. The list is endless really. And what we're going to do today is we're going to have a little think about when we looked at those flat 2D shapes, we've got a rectangle here, and how those flat 2D shapes can be put together to make a 3D shape. And can you remember what you call it when you have lots of flat 2D shapes and you put them together to make a 3D shape? Can you remember? We did it in our maths. A net. Left. You also call those nets patterns. And you can have paper patterns or you can have fabric patterns. I was having my tea last night and I found a really good net can you see? That's our, fl our flat box. We put it together to make the packaging. Make sure children have had plenty of time to take apart existing products so they are really confident and familiar with how they're put together. What we're going to do today to take our learning forward is we're going to look at a piece of software that's going to help us create some paper patterns that we can use to make our own bags. Your challenge today is to use the Wild Things software that we've got and I want you to explore it and see what you can do with it and by the end of the lesson what I'd like you to do is produce a pattern for a bag. I'm going to send you away now to your computers. Some of you are going to work in pairs some of you are going to work individually. You'll need to think really carefully how you manage a whole class working on this part of the project. You may want to have pairs, individuals or small groups working on the computers. So what do you work so, ten? Yeah, ten. So your diet? Yeah, try that. And then that. you want the height of the pocket. And that obviously needs to be, really to be really smaller really than the bag, doesn't it? Bag so should we do that five or something? Yeah. yeah. So Make use of free like online computer-aided design software. We're using Wild Things. It's a wonderful program for introducing primary children to computer-aided design. At school, we very, very often start off with drawing our designs on paper, but a real designer and real design teams will more often than not use computer-aided design. This is a really challenging exercise and will really stretch your more able mathematicians. bottom of yours, that's the bottom of yours, great. So it's really helpful if you have an A3 printer or can print off using the photocopier, but if you only have an A4 printer, the pattern pieces can still be stuck together really easily. We've experimented with the software and you've all managed to print out a pattern that we're going to take back into the classroom now to create a paper mock-up of the bag that you'd like to make. For children who are finding this activity difficult, make sure they're using a simple shaped bag and are using a small number of pieces. And Harriet just showed us how she was thinking of putting the evening bag. So what would you do, Harriet, to place that together? Turn this one over like this and then put this one on. Use paper clips to secure the paper pattern pieces when children are making their paper mock-ups. Don't use glue until the children are absolutely confident their construction is secure. He's going to try it on. Luke, Charles, you come and help Lewis hold it and see if it's the right. You could put a paper clip to market, that's a really good idea. Paper clips, you can take them, you can put them on easily and take them off easily. But with glue, when you stick them on, you can't really take them off and it makes a messy mess afterwards. And it doesn't look that nice. This theme provides a great opportunity for developing strong cross-curricular links. We've investigated the properties of materials in science, 
3D shape in maths, as well as enhanced our ICT skills. Right, children, now if you remember, um, recently we've been designing our own bags, haven't we? Okay, and when we've been designing our own bags, I've given you something called wild cards, haven't I? So can you get anyone tell me what I mean by wild cards? Beth? Um, they're like constraints to tell you what you need to include in your design. Yeah. Well done. Normally, I use wild cards through design technology, but they can also be used through other subjects. For example, today, I've used them through literacy. We've been looking at a variety of different adverts. Can you remember the type of adverts that we've actually been looking at over the last week or so? Well, different type of adverts. Chris? Adverts on television. Maddie? Uh, newspapers. Lily? Magazines. Children really need that previous experience of reading existing adverts where they can analyse the organisational and language features. What were the different constraints that you were given when you were designing your bag? What did you have to think about? What was our design criteria? Uh, Emma? Size of the bag. Brilliant, yeah. Beth. Appearance. Appearance, Rosie. Who it was for. Who it was for. Type of bag. The type of bag. Its purpose. And its purpose. Brilliant, okay. So now you're going to go away and you're going to brainstorm your ideas for your own advert for the bag that you have chosen on the table. You have your constraints, include them in your brainstorm, use your checklists, all right? If you remember, we've got words like alliteration, using a motive. Create language. checklists for each of the persuasive genre. This can be done with the children while analysing existing adverts. Let's see some really good cooperative planning. 20 minutes, off you go. Have you got a dirty bag? Do you need a new one? Do you need a new bag? Yeah. yeah. Do you need a new bag when they actually really don't? That's the next one. The wild cards can be used to differentiate. For example, for the more able, you can add more constraints, but for those children that need more support, you can add more detail about what needs to be added in the advert. We've got to have a semicolon, a colon, comma, full stop and brackets, and strong adjectives which are durable and luxury. And what we're going to do now, we're going to swap our work, and we're going to evaluate each other's work against a checklist. All right, to see how successful we have been. All right, so this is where we've got to be a critical friend. What do I mean by critical friend? Um, it, it, you help uh, the other person, well, the other group, understand what they need to improve the bag next time they do it. Absolutely. So next steps, you need to do, you need to use more emotive language or have a look at that sentence, how could it be improved? Using peer-to-peer -peer assessment is a real powerful tool that you can use in the classroom to develop independence. Children can use critical friends to evaluate and analyse their work against a given criteria. some feedback, just quick feedback on what's been done well with these lines that we have written, what's been done well. They've put quite a lot of words in to make you buy it like fashionable, flirting, fantastic. Okay, what, what are the type, what type of words are those as well? They've used them in a list there, what do we call alliteration. it? Alliteration. They've used alliteration. Anything that they need to work on now? More connectives. They need to use some connectives, okay. All right, Christopher? also used a rhetorical question quite well. Um, so where was the rhetorical question for this It starts so far? at the very beginning and it pulls you straight in. Yeah, so it's making the, the reader actually, oh, OK, question their maybe their style of bag that they have at the moment. Well done. Right, that group over there. Cross-curricular links are meant to be meaningful and not tenuous. They need to enhance the subject. If they don't fit, don't try to make them. Finding examples of bags that have been made from recycled materials is really easy. Go online and you can find bags that have been made from drinks cartons, old tyres, seat belts and plastic bags. This morning we're going to be thinking about the three R's. So not the history three R's. Can you think, can you remember what those three R's that we've been talking about are? Can you remember? Lewis, you give me one. Reuse. Re oh, <laughs> reuse. Reduce. Yeah. Recycle. Recycle. Let's reduce. Reuse. In PHSE, children need to experience being responsible citizens. This project allows them to practice reducing, reusing and recycling first-hand. And I've been online and I've found some fantastic examples that we can have a look at this morning. And I've actually got some examples that people have made themselves from reusable materials that they've recycled. And I'm sure you're going to be like me, you won't believe 
what bags are made from. Now I've seen these in lots and lots and lots of shops at Christmas time in particular. So have a closer look. Can you think what they're made from? I'm really good. William, what do you think? Uh, are they little juice cartons? They are juice cartons. They are the little ones, the little squishy ones. And this is what it said about it. Because that's non-biodegradable. That means it won't rot away when we put it in the landfill site. So it just stays there forever and ever and ever and it litters the streets and it just sort of stays there and it's just not very nice. So that is a really good example how something's been reused and recycled. Charles, if you'd like to empty the big bag of our salvageable materials and we'll see what we've got. Oh, brilliant, thank you. So I want you to sort through it, have a look, really look at the fabric, see what is going to be really good for your bag. Work smartly and use science to help the children find out about the properties of the materials they will be using. They can find out if they're waterproof, how strong they are and how durable they are. What could I do? What do you think I could do? What would I do, Jade? You should do a science experiment and see if it's waterproof or not. So you could use it for an outside bag and if it wasn't, you could just use it for a shopping bag. A shopping bag. I think that's, I think that's a really good idea. So you could choose three, two or three materials to test which would be the best one. This is a great opportunity to develop children's speaking and listening skills. They need to be able to offer clear explanations using appropriate vocabulary. What do you think this would be good for? What you'd do you use think? it inside of a <coughs> bag because it tears it? easily so you wouldn't want it outside and it would, uh, it's not really waterproof. So Absolutely. you'd have it so in a bag that you pull out to like pressure stuff in because it wouldn't smash in the thing because it would just ha it has protection. It would, it would, it nice would protect it, it's very soft. So what else might you use mm, uh, sort of quite thick material for, lots of layers of material for? In insulate. Insulate, well done. It would help insulate. So if you were making a... Make sure that when children are working with fabric, they're also using the correct equipment, such as fabric scissors and proper dressmaking pins. I've said to Bethan, what you've been doing today, perhaps you don't realise, but in our own small way, we've been doing lots of work towards being responsible citizens and doing our little bit towards recycling and reusing and, and improving the environment. Did you realise that when you were doing your work? Did you realise? Did you think about, did you think that, oh, actually... Quite fun. It's quite fun. It's quite fun, all this recycling. It doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to be just about taking your rubbish to the recycling bin and forgetting about it. It's about trying to be creative and using something and making for something else. So, well done. What you need to do now, this is really important. Conclude this project with a celebration assembly. Invite classmates, teachers and families to share in the children's learning.